China has its fair share of legendary maritime explorers. There's none greater than the great 15th century navigator Zheng He and his massive fleet. But since then, examples have been few and far between. But in recent decades, an increasing number of ordinary Chinese citizens have taken up sailing as a hobby, recreation or even as their lifelong endeavor. Among them, 55-year-old Jai Moore is one of the most renowned, who has made history by becoming the first in the world to have circumnavigated the Arctic Ocean. For me, the voyage should always be round or in a circle. I was very excited when my boat re-entered the estuary of the Yangtze River, because that meant my voyage had reached a circle and concluded my voyage to the Arctic Ocean and back. His voyage to the Arctic Ocean was made possible due to the melting of icebergs as a result of global warming in the high Arctic. Seeing the effects of climate change with his own eyes, the Chinese navigator has taken as his mission the challenge of reminding people living across the globe to take concrete steps to preserve the environment and the planet, not just for ourselves, but for future generations too. We didn't see a single piece of ice for a week in the East Siberian Sea. The ice there had melted. In the past, there were always ice flows within the Arctic Circle. The impact of climate change was shocking to us. Through our voyage, we wanted to remind people of climate change and the importance of environmental protection. In this edition of Footprints, let's follow Jai Moore to see how he has become a maritime adventurer and what he really witnessed in his Arctic voyage. Tall and strong, deep tanned and wearing a firm facial expression and long hair, in Jai Moore you can see the combination of features of two occupations, a captain and an artist. At first glance, you may size him up as more of a captain or a navigator than as a painter, with decades of sailing at sea having transformed his appearance, if not his soul. Yet deep in his heart and soul, sailing and painting have both given Jai Moore the channel and opportunity to pursue his passion for freedom and adventure. Originally trained as a professional painter, Jai only began sailing in his thirties. In 1999, he ran into a Norwegian voyager in New Zealand when he went there for an international painting exhibition. The first time I stepped on a sailboat, I felt at home. I asked the old captain how many countries he had sailed to. Without telling me a number, he said he had circumnavigated the earth one and a half times. I asked if he needed a visa. He said no. I asked if he needed a driver's license. He said no. As more than 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by water, you can sail to places where planes and trains can't reach. With a boat, you can explore the world. I was very excited at the time. So I decided to buy a second-hand sailboat in New Zealand. I sailed it from there to Tahiti. Tahiti holds a special meaning for Jai Moore. The island is the region where the 19th century French painter Paul Gauguin drew his famous work Tahitian Women on the Beach. His maiden voyage, about 2,400 nautical miles, lasted for 28 days. He had gained his first hands-on experience in this extreme sport. He really loved it. Three years after his maiden voyage, Jai Moore sailed China's coastline from the port of Dalian to the port of Sanya in 55 days. The voyage was 7,600 nautical miles. In January 2007, he began his first solo circumnavigation around the Earth. During that journey, he met with lots of challenges. One unexpected obstacle was to deal with his captors on an island. 
环球航海的时候，当时在印度洋，我都剁断了。While I was in the Indian Ocean during my circumnavigation, my rudder broke. After floating for 12 days in a storm, I was forced to enter a U.S. naval base on the island of Diego Garcia in the Indian Ocean. Two speedboats with 12 soldiers appeared in front of me before I touched land. They took me to the island and locked me in a small room. After the door was locked, I saw a bed, a Bible, and a urinal. It reminded me of prisons in the U.S. movies. The first thing they said was that I illegally broke into the territory of another country, so I had to be fined or go to jail. I said I would like to be jailed. Because I could take rest. Then my translator explained to the soldiers what happened to me and said I was the first Chinese person circumnavigating the world. Later, the soldiers helped me fix the rudder and freed me. The incident's happy outcome boded well for his ambitious goal of sailing around the globe alone. In August 2009, he completed the journey, becoming the first Chinese sailor to do so. This journey took him 935 days and stretched 35,000 nautical miles. Jai was proud to have become the first Chinese sailor to circumnavigate the globe on a sailboat, and paid tribute to China's ancient great maritime explorer, Zheng He. I felt like I sailed a little bit further than Zheng He. I bypassed the Cape of Good Hope. It was the first time a Chinese person has bypassed the Cape on a sailboat. You know, it was a milestone for a navigator to bypass the Cape of Good Hope. Zheng He was the legendary Chinese navigator in the 15th century who led seven state-sponsored voyages to as far as East Africa. Jai Mo greatly admires this ancient seafarer. More than a decade after he surpassed the achievements of his admired ancient forebear, Jai Moore was ready to make history again. On June the 30th, 2021, he and two other crew members set sail from the Huangpu River in Shanghai. This time, his goal was to sail to the Arctic Ocean. I was inspired by a Dutch navigator. About 20 years ago, I had a meeting with him, and he said to me that he wanted to sail to the Arctic, but his ship was stuck in ice on his route from Norway to Russia. He was only able to be rescued the next year when a Russian icebreaker came to help him. At the time, icebergs didn't melt as quickly as now. When I heard his story, I thought I could make the voyage one day by myself. For the historic voyage to the Arctic Ocean, Jai Moore bought a new sailboat, which had two masts with four sails and was made of aluminium alloy. The boat was 25 meters in length and seven meters in width. I constantly scouted for a proper sailboat for my Arctic voyage. One day, one of my friends from New Zealand told me he wanted to sail a boat. I did some research and confirmed the boat was what I wanted. I asked him to sail the boat to Hong Kong. The boat is made of aluminium alloy. You know, this material is better than fiberglass or carbon fiber. A boat made of the latter two materials would incur a hole when it hit ice in the Arctic, but a boat of aluminium alloy would only dent under the same conditions. To get well prepared for his adventure, Jai Mo and his crew, a Russian sailor and a Chinese sailor. Underwent an intense period of time to get familiar with their new boat. The relationship between a captain and his boat is very special. When his boat gets into trouble, the captain will try his best to save it and even die with it. So this relationship means I am very familiar with my boat. I could walk to anywhere on my boat blindfold. Jai Moore and his crew loaded lots of food and supplies, navigation maps, 
books, satellite communication equipment, and other essential supplies for the dangerous journey. He brought about 100 kilograms of pancakes, a popular ready-made food in Shandong province, where Jai was born and grew up. There was a microwave oven and an electric cooker on board, which the crew could use to cook food for themselves. According to their plan, their voyage would be non-stop, meaning no port visit within the Arctic Ocean. We had to grasp the narrow window of time. If our boat was frozen by the ice, we would only have to dock with the land. The likelihood of failure for us was very high. There was no previous successful example, but I was determined to make a try. Steadily and smoothly, Jai Moore and his boat passed the East China Sea, Tsushima Strait, Sea of Japan and the Northwest Pacific Ocean. In late July 2021, their boat crossed the Bering Strait, entering the Arctic Circle. Dangers were ahead of Jai Moore and his crew. We entered the Chukchi Sea after crossing the Bering Strait. When you open a map of the Arctic, you will see most of the places are named after pioneering navigators. The route we would be traveling is called a Death Channel. Jai explains that more than a decade ago, it was almost impossible for a sailboat to go through the Arctic, as global warming was yet to melt the ice there to allow for the passage of an ordinary boat. As a result, many navigators failed to sail through the Arctic as they would often get stuck amid the ice. Jai and his crew had to grasp the narrow window of time, about two weeks from mid-July to early August, when temperatures in the Arctic reach their highest. Ironically, it's global warming that allowed Jai to become the first person in the world to circumnavigate the Arctic non-stop in a sailboat. But global warming is a challenge for the world, and Jai's voyage was designed to arouse people's awareness of this issue. Of course, Jai's voyage in the Arctic was not just about combating dangers and the issue of climate change. During their voyage, Jai and his crew also had good fun when the weather and sea generously offered their good sides to them. Sometimes they fished both for leisure, like holidaymakers on a cruise ship, and also for practical purposes, resupplying food for themselves. There are four major marine fisheries in the world. Our boat passed three of them, Sea of Japan of Hokkaido, the North Sea around Norway, and the sea around Newfoundland. When we were there, we caught lots of fish, including cod and salmon. We stored them in the fridge for supplies for our next voyage. But the leisure and fun didn't last long. According to their original plan, the voyage would last only four months, entering through the Bering Strait to the Arctic, making a circuit and then returning. But halfway through their voyage, extreme weather struck. Ice blocked their return voyage. They had to make a detour. The journey would end up being four times their planned duration. Although Jai Moore was already a seasoned navigator, the test was a huge challenge for him and his crew. The most dangerous part in our voyage was when our boat sailed to 75 degrees latitude north. All our navigation equipment stopped working. This was a grave challenge. We didn't even know our direction. What's worse, the time period allowing for the passage of a sailboat there is very short. If a boat can't cross the area in time, it will get stuck in ice, and the polar bears may attack you if you are stuck there. For about five days, the electronic equipment on board the boat stopped working due to the Earth's strong magnetic field in the polar region. The boat was in the area of the Severnaya Zemlya Archipelago. Jai and his crew relied on their eyes and the islands nearby to set the direction of their boat. While trying to find directions, Jai had to make a zigzag route in the high Arctic area due to the ice flows. The short summer in the Arctic was soon to end. Only about 10 days were left for him to navigate his boat out of the Arctic. 
Jai couldn't afford to spend too much time in the high Arctic. If he could not sail out of the high Arctic in time, he would have to stay there until the next summer. Jai didn't want to face this condition, although he had to make a contingency plan. If our boat was frozen in the Arctic, the sea would be covered with ice. Then we would have to face the threat of polar bears. We were permitted to carry guns with us, but we didn't. We carried only three signal guns and lots of firecrackers, which would be useful to drive away polar bears. So we had made contingency plans. Supplies on his boat were adequate for them to consume for one year and a half. It's fortunate that they didn't get caught up in the ice, but they did have to face another challenge, polar cyclones. For several days, they were battling this extreme weather, which created waves as high as 10 meters. To aggravate the situation, one of their crew members made a grave mistake amid the cyclones. I asked one of my crew to draw down the sails, but instead he released the sails. He pressed the wrong button. This mistake could have killed all of us. Our boat immediately went into a position like half standing, in an angle of 45 to 50 degrees above the water. We three tightly clung to the masts to avoid sliding into the sea. At that moment, another huge wave was threatening to swallow their boat. It took a little bit of luck and brute manual force to save the boat and its crew from the brink of demise. The three ropes of the sails were being blown by the cyclone wildly. The rails of our boat were crushed by the impact of the fierce ropes, two of which were also broken. As a result, only one rope connected the sails to the mast. This was very dangerous. The mast was in danger of being broken as only one rope was attached to the sails. We three tried our best to pull back the sails, which almost fell to the sea. We used our brute force to try to save ourselves for almost two hours. At last, we succeeded after exerting the last ounce of our strength. At that very dangerous moment, I even thought of cutting off the rope and abandoning the sails. Jai recalled he was still calm during this very dangerous moment, as he was always braced for the extremes as a naval explorer. Exploring at sea means danger, but every time I set sail, I tell myself that I must go back alive. This is my state of mind as an explorer. To add fuel to the fire, the cyclones didn't just cause high winds and waves. They blew ice flows towards their small and vulnerable sailboat. Our route was near the location where the Titanic went down. There were countless ice flows and icebergs. We were scared to our core. It was hard to avoid hitting ice. Our boat sailed very slowly. The icebergs sometimes were hidden underwater. They were invisible to us. Jai assigned his two crew members to take turns to stand on the bow of their boat to look out for the icebergs around the clock and he himself was in control of the whole boat, its rudder position and direction, having almost no time to sleep. The dangers were inevitable. Their boat hit an iceberg near Greenland in mid-September 2021. The weather was dark grey. The icebergs looked like gravestones for us. It was scary. We sailed very slowly, about 1 knot or 1.85 kilometers an hour. We rammed into one iceberg. It made a huge sound, like the beating of a drum. The feeling was like hitting my own body. It's very painful. 
Water began to seep into our boat from the bottom. It was not until we reached Boston that we mended our boat. Jai and his crew dealt with the seepage with a pump and got ready for the worst-case scenario. Every two hours, we three went to check the lower cabin where the seepage was occurring. We were worried that the pump may stop working. The pump was powered by electricity. If it stopped working, we would have to use our hands to remove the water. If there had been a hole letting water in, we would only have to abandon our boat. We got our lifeboats ready, but we hoped this worst-case scenario would not come. Jai and his two team members lived with constant danger as a result of the seepage for a month. In late October 2021, Jai Moore and his crew finished their round voyage in the Arctic Ocean. But due to global warming, their previously planned return route was infested with ice flows. They had to head west, entering the seas of Canada and the United States, where they fixed their damaged boat in Boston. This roundabout voyage lengthened their time of the whole voyage by about a year. In August 2022, they passed through the sea off Cuba and the Panama Canal, and finally sailed back to Shanghai, from where they had set sail. On November 15, 2022, after 504 days of voyage, they reached land in Shanghai. Fun, danger, damage and finally success. Jai and his crew made history through their creativity, courage and persistence. Our voyage to the Arctic Ocean was not just on behalf of our country, but also the whole of humanity. Moreover, I had a mission, reminding humans of the threat of global warming. In January 2021, Jai Moore was recruited by the United Nations Development Program as the Defend Nature Publicity Officer. Since then, he has tried to convey the message of environmental preservation to people around the world. During his voyages at sea, he had a close-up look at the effects of climate change, and he has used his own experience to amplify his Defend Nature message. We didn't see a single piece of ice for a week in the East Siberian Sea. The ice there had melted. In the past, there were always ice flows within the Arctic Circle. The impact of climate change was shocking to us. Also along our route from Hawaii to the Northwest Pacific, we encountered three typhoons in a week. This was unprecedented. This was caused by climate change. So through our voyage, we wanted to remind people of climate change and the importance of environmental protection. Build a house at sea. My life is to explore. This is a line from a song Jai Moore takes as his motto. Turning from a painter to an explorer, Jai Moore has rediscovered and redefined himself. Now, he is adored by many young people in China. And this legendary navigator plans to build a marine school in Shanghai in order to make children and young people more aware of the sea and sailing. Jai himself has a teenage son, and he intends to bring him on board when he sets off the next time. In the United States, France and Canada, there are high schools at sea. Sailing can provide the most comprehensive platform where you can learn a wide range of knowledge, from abstract subjects like geography and astronomy to practical skills like carpentry and painting. One must have the ability to combat difficulties. I think many children in our country lack such ability. What I really want to do is to help more children and young people get to know and then explore the oceans, the unknowns, and challenge themselves. For himself, Jai Moore is always ready to explore the still unknown parts of the world with his boat. 
Humans have reached the world's highest summit, but we have not reached the deepest point under sea. There are so many things we don't know about the oceans. Marine exploration is a fascinating experience. It's marvelous to see the world up close with your own eyes. With that, we conclude this edition of Footprints. Thanks for listening. I'm Bob Jones. If you're interested in hearing more about the lives of ordinary people in China, follow us on Apple Podcasts or any of your favorite podcast platforms. Just key in Footprints and you can find more stories anytime, anywhere. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.